The following program was made by a volunteer producer. The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of MCM Productions. My name is Alexandra Skeeter. I am from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, and I am studying medicine in Havana, Cuba. I was, I grew up here in Milwaukee um, in uptown neighborhoods in Sherman Park area, and uh, I went through to MPS my entire, my entire education career. Um, and when I graduated from Rufus King High School, I went to the University of Minnesota in Crookston, and I was a pre-med major there. I did my undergrad studies and I graduated in 2014. And after that, I uh, applied to, to the school, to ELAM, to the Latin American Medical School in Havana, Cuba. And um, yeah, I was accepted and I, and I left Milwaukee uh, August 2014. And I've been there ever since. ELAM itself is very, it's the largest international medical school in the world. Um, I go to school with about 3,500 other students from over 80 countries. And so as you can imagine, it's very much international. There's lots of languages being spoken. Um, I go to school with um, students from Palestine, students from the Caribbean, from South America, from you know continental Africa. And so I hear lots of languages every day when I'm walking through the halls, I hear, um, Arabic, I hear French, I hear um, Portuguese, I hear Zulu, I hear, you know, of course, Spanish. I learned Spanish two years ago, and so um, I'm just very grateful. I'm very thankful for the opportunity to study, to study medicine in Cuba, and I'm very thankful for the Cuban government, for Fidel, for creating my school, for IFCO, for uh, this group for all my friends and family back here in Milwaukee that have supported me. It's been, it's been unbelievable. Growing up, I, I was one of those girls that, that um, you know, wasn't the strongest or wasn't the most confident in her academic abilities and my academic abilities. Um, and so going to medical school or even attempting or even applying to medical school was a really lofty dream of mine that I had that I never thought that I would be able to do. Going into my first year, it's called pre-med and pre-medico in Cuba. And after that year, I can't even describe to you how empowered I felt. Um, just from one year studying there, I felt so powerful, so um, capable. And I think that is due to um, just a different type of learning in Cuba. There, there's so many different assessments and so, um, you know, you're looked at, you're evaluated in so many different ways, and um, you have so many different ways to excel. And uh, I feel like I do that there. I want to tell people that you can do it if you don't think that, uh, you know, graduate school is for you or even medical school, that you can do it. Um, go to Cuba and study medicine. <laughs> First of all, like, I'm, in, I'm in love with community medicine. I love everything that it is and what I've seen and how they do it in Cuba. Um, so with that in mind, with community medicine, with you know an emphasis on primary care, uh, I would like to bring that here because that doesn't exist. And that's where a lot of problems are, is in primary care because a lot of people aren't getting um, things taken care of while they're still manageable. They're waiting until um, it gets to be you know, catastrophic. The doctors spend so much time with them, on average, 45 minutes to an hour with each patient. Now imagine that here in the States. Um, I believe you only, doctors are allowed about 10 to 15 minutes per patient. And so that's a huge difference in time and face-to-face uh, in direct contact with your patients that human doctors really utilize to get a full um, clinical history to really learn and really know their patients to, or just um, sit down and drink coffee with your patients or just, you know, how are you feeling? De verdad, 
you know? <laughs> um, and so I just feel like the doctors there just have like a genuine interest in their patients and they really love the community that they're serving. Not to say the doctors here in the U.S., you know, I'm not comparing. As well, um, going around, knocking on doors. I did this past year looking for, we were doing in the community a survey, um, just looking for any types of symptoms that could be related to uh, Zika or it could be related to dengue. And so I'm um, talking with Cubans, you know, ordinary everyday Cubans that live, uh, they're very, uh, their, their health literacy is so high. Everyone seemed to know what a fever is, what um, things you should be looking for. Being responsible for your, your body and for your family and for your own health. And so um, just really the idea that there's so many things that go into health and wellness. And I feel like in Cuba, they're all, all of those factors are identified and are respected. And so how all these, how your community can uh, influence your health and wellness, how your family, how your environment, how your housing, um, all these things affect your well-being. And so um, I feel like in the primary care sec uh, sector of medicine in Cuba, I think they do that very well. Buenas noches a todos y todas. Yo me llamo Alexandra. Uh, bueno, allá en Cuba me llaman Alexandra, pero aquí en Milwaukee, Alexandra, or just Alex is fine. Um, I am a third year medical student now. I just finished the first two years. Um, I've been in Cuba for three years in total now. And the first year I learned Spanish, I didn't, I didn't uh, know Spanish. I grew up in um, uptown neighborhoods, Sherman Park area, and yeah, the first year was spent learning Spanish, and then the following two uh, were the first two years of medical school, and so, yes, that's a little bit about me. I have my family in the front there. Um, I also want to just say thank you to everyone for coming um, to Cuba and the government for giving me a scholarship for Fidel for, for creating my school for IFCO, Pastors for Peace for Arthur and all the work that you guys do with the Wisconsin Coalition for the Normalization of Relations, my friends and family. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to see all of you. Um, should we stand up? Let's stand up. Let's get a little stretch. I feel, <laughs> raise those arms, reach to the sky, touch the toes, smile, shake it out. Yeah, that's better. It's a little better. Okay, thank you, sit down, please. Um, so this is the beginning. I'm gonna fly through it and then we'll do questions and I will do my best to answer them. <clears throat> Summary, so the history of medicine we'll just skip over as well. I can send anyone this document that would like it, send me an email, shoot it to you. Yeah. So basically, uh, six, dollars, six doctors on the entire island, I think that's pretty um, wild. And then by 1984, gracias to the revolution, um, they have more doctors on the small island of Cuba than the whole continental Africa. And so here is like my favorite part, the arroz, the arroz con pollo, what they say in Cuba, like the meat, you know, why are you here? Why are you doing what you're doing? And I think that these, um, principles of the Cuban healthcare system, you know, explains exactly that. Can we go back up to that, please? Just want to spend a little bit of time there. The first one, you know, hits you really hard. Eh, healthcare is a human right. Amen. Uh, accessible and free. It's the principle of their healthcare. The foundation of it is in primary care. At least 80% of all cases are resolved within the primary care. Uh, sector. There's a primary on health promotion and disease prevention. I am a witness to that because as first two years of medical school is all about that, <laughs> health promotion and disease prevention. We do lots of messages, we do lots of talks to the community, we do, we practice on each other when we go to the clinics, we're interacting with patients, we're at uh, elementary schools, we do lots of things to promote health, to educate 
and to prevent disease. Uh, Data-driven, evidence-based, there's an emphasis on community participation that is huge as well. Uh, everyone in the community plays a role and everyone is important and significant and um, it's a principle. Commitment to international collaboration. They, the Cubans sent the largest brigade, health brigade, to fight the Ebola crisis in West Africa. So that's an example of their commitment. The school itself is an example of the commitment to international uh, collaboration. You know, they're offering free scholarships to students all over the world that come from areas um, that are underserved um, in the healthcare realm as well as um, just are impoverished or that have been affected by a natural disaster. A little bit about how, the organ, the, how their healthcare system is organized. It's, there's three levels. There's primary, secondary, and tertiary. And so, like I said, 80% of the health problems are resolved in primary care, which is the lowest. It's um, composed of the medical doctor and then the nurse. And they do a lot of um, house calls, a lot of um, time spent face to face with your patients. I think on average here in the United States, doctors spend about 10 to 15 minutes. And does, does that sound about right with you in the, in the, um, what about Mr. Como se the, in the, in the office with you doing the exam or doing their diagnosis, they spend about that much time. Well, in Cuba, they spend about 45 to an hour with each patient, right? So think of like all the time that you can spend getting to know their clinical history, finding out where they live, um, actually visiting their house, having a cup of coffee, and lots of things. So love that part. Um, secondary care is in the hospital. So that's where women have their babies. That's where you get, if you need to have, go under surgery, you're considered under secondary care. And then tertiary is specialty and research facilities. Um, IPEC, um, I've been there multiple times. They, they do lots of uh, workshops, conferences to uh, spread the knowledge of health. The accessibility. So imagine if we could all walk to a clinic and we can all be seen. You know, it might take a, a while because they're spending 45 minutes to an hour with you. However, you're going to be seen, and you're going to be seen well, and you're going to be treated with respect and dignity. You're going to be heard. You are going to be cared for. You know, that's like that's what I see. That's what I see. That's how I see healthcare. That's how I see myself practicing healthcare. Um, family doctors live in the communities that they serve. They are seen. Patients are seen by appointment or walk-in. Mostly walk-in. Um, the appointment, I would assume, is more for tertiary care. I haven't encountered an appointment yet or a system. Um, routine home care, home visits. This is a picture of a student. This is like a typical consult um, or just a doctor's office. So it's very simple, very basic. Um, the doctor usually just has her, his or her stethoscope, um, the white bata blanca, the, you know, and the patient. And, whichever, the mom or the baby's the patient, um, probably be the baby. Also, biopsychosocial health model. We start learning this from the, um, the start, principio. So you learn how they think of health. How do they think of health? They think of it biologically, socially, psychologically. These are all huge determinants of health and to to have the, the, to be well or to have a well-being, your well-being is determined by those three factors. So where do I go to school? I go to the Latin American Medical School, Latin American School of Medicine, Escuela Latinoamericana de Medicina. Um, sigue. Continue. So quickly about how the school was founded. In 1998, there was a hurricane, Hurricane Mitch, in Nicaragua, in Honduras, and um, Hurricane George's. This is very typical of the Cuban um, MinSAP. The, the government will send doctors, thousands of doctors, hundreds of doctors, to fight, or just to aid in these natural disasters. Because I will 
In fifth year, I will be taking a course on nat uh, disaster medicine. And, and so we'll be trained in that. Um, and so Cuban doctors are very primed to help in these types of situations. Yeah, we can keep going. I love this quote. Doctors ready to work where they are most needed in the farthest places worldwide where there's no one else willing to go. That is a doctor that will be formed in this school. <laughs> yeah. Right, so what makes us different? What makes me different as a medical student studying in Cuba than other medical, than um, US medical schools? Uh, the first thing is the curriculum. It's a six years. The curriculum is, is based on systems, and so I've learned the human body by the systems-based curriculum. So what's the system? Um, cardiovascular system, endocrine system, nervous system, um, muscle bones, joints, etc. The student body, over 80 countries, and so the school is very, it's an international school. It's the largest international school in the world. Um, I'm very fortunate to go doctors of science with conscience, strong emphasis on community prevention. And then, as I've said, I'm on a full scholarship, so what does that include? Tuition, it includes housing, three meals a day in the comodor or in the cafeteria, um, textbooks, uniform. So if you know anyone, keep in mind this whole time, you have to be 25 to apply at the time that you enter the school. So if you guys know of anyone in high school, um, in undergrad, you know, looking for something to do or if they have a, a strong conviction about community justice and social justice and want to work in the communities, this is a great program for that. So this is a recent picture. This was just the start of this academic school year. So this was September 1st or, or the first Monday of September. Um, and so that's uh, about half of our delegation of the U.S. students studying in Cuba. Yes, so as I said, the first year was six months of Spanish, intense Spanish. So you have class from eight to probably about one or so, all in Spanish. I think the, the biggest difference is that uh, I took Spanish in high school at Rufus King. And the Spanish, it was, you are still able to communicate in English. And so you're put into a classroom, usually no one else speaks English, there might be another person that speaks English, but you're really having to learn Spanish and really having to respond in Spanish, and um, I think that is gold. Yeah, we can keep going. So this is just an outline of every year. So I was just, I just finished the second year, so I'll be going into third year. So I have a whole year of internal medicine of those who uh, know about medicine and medical training. That's a lot, it's a lot of time spent that I'll get hands-on work with, um, with patients. And then the fourth year, I'll be rotating through the hospital. So general surgery, OB-GYN, obstetrics and gynecology, pediatrics, so on and so forth, until I finish, which will be sixth year. And then I'll graduate. Um, I'm starting studying for the boards. I'll talk about that later. OK, the student body, we can keep going. There's pictures that will demonstrate, and I'll just, great. So, I'm not sure when this exactly is, but I'm assuming there are lots of programs that happen at my school, and they usually happen on this. This is called the polygono. What's that in English? Polygon? And so it's right here, actually, in this poster. And so that is here. And so if you can just imagine all of these, like from here, um, students come out and to watch, and then they usually put on the program about here. So, you know, first day of, first day of class, um, various independence days for various countries, for example. So here just demonstrates the diversity of the student body. Nicaragua, Honduras, South Africa, Congo, Chad. She's from Caribbean, um, from the Caribbean. Where is she from? Antigua. Um, this is a picture of us as well, just a small group of us at one of these events. You can see the diversity of the US students as well. Lucius Walker, the man why we all go to the school, 
Um, he was the founder of IFCO and Pastors for Peace. Maybe some of you, that name is familiar. He's the one that had the relationship with Fidel, and, he, and Fidel offered um, the scholarship to US students if IFCO would be the ambassadors, if they would facilitate that process. And so, yes, the caravan, picture of the famous buses that are still driven down in Cuba. You see them and say, hey, Pastore Palatos. Yes, that is the story of how all of this happened, how we were able to study. There was a meeting um, in, Fidel was actually in New York when he gave, yes, at this church, when he gave the invitation for US students to come and study, which is huge. Um, because we should be able to study medicine for free in your own country, but. Okay, Cuba is interested in providing medical training to qualified students who are committed to working in uh, medically underserved communities in the U.S., but would not be able to do so if they graduated with hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. Right? More Fidel. Shout out to South Africa, Nelson Mandela. <laughs> It's actually a, a huge amount, a number, a huge amount of students that are studying at my school now from South Africa. There's a, huge, there's a program um, that they have. These are just other US students, kind of just giving you a picture of who we are, what we look like. This is Olive Albanese. She is the other Wisconsin student studying in my school as well, that's her with some compañeros. This is us, we got to uh, finally paint a wall after 16 years of US students being there. Um, we were able to get it approved and this wall really meant a lot to us painting. These are five guys that are in my class. Shout out to all of you, love you. Yeah, I can keep going. Okay, so this, I just put a little bit, some pictures so that you guys can see kind of my life. Um, these are my classmates who I study with um, from various countries. He's from Angola, South Africa. The girl is from the Bahamas. And this is um, just a study room on campus. These are other US students. Che is always around. Um, we have Manolo de los Santos and Gail Walker. This is um, Lucius Walker's daughter, who is now the director of IFCO. They were in Cuba, they visited. Um, just more classmates. Uh, these are my, he's Syrian, but the, this girl and this girl is from Palestine. Um, so, when I graduate in four years, I will have had to take three exams, three board exams. Those are called the, the USMLE, the United States Medical Licensing Exams. There's about three, costing about $1,000 each. And I will have to take two of them before applying to residency. And then my school is also approved by the California State Medical Licensing Board, the most stringent in the US of A. This is one of the first graduating classes of our school. This is Dr. Melissa Barber on the far, year far left. Um, and she is now the director of the scholarship program at IFCO. And that's Mama Cat. Um, here, this is a, a, an example of what students can do. So back in, um, these women, they traveled to Haiti to help out. Some of them took a year off of school. Um, some of them were already done, but they were welcomed and the help was welcomed by the Cubans to work alongside the same, the very people that trained them, you know, um, to help out and just show their solidarity with Haiti. So I have some more up to date Data, data. Yeah, so 12 worked in Haiti for one month more, or following the earthquake, that was that picture, above 128 from more than 30 states, plus DC and Puerto Rico have graduated from Elam with medical de M M D degrees. Um, we do well, we do well. So what are our hopes as students of this of this program that, or just Olive, Olive Albanese and Isis hopes, 
uh, that our students are supported by their communities, yes. all of yes. you, yes. <laughs> by local, state, and federal government to supplement travel costs, living stipends, and to help with the cost of the board exams. We want an increase in, or we hope for an increase in opportunities for clinical experience in the U.S. during the summers, exchange programs between ELAM and U.S. medical schools, which has already started happening. I get, um, this year I've, I got a few emails about medical students uh, wanting to do an elective course in Cuba uh, so that we would like every student to pass the boards, preferably before graduation. We want to return to our communities and offer free medical services to those most in need, to collaborate with Cuba and our friends from other countries on international medical missions, and to create clinics, hospitals, and medical schools fully staffed by ELAM grads. This is uh, Luther Castillo. He was one of the first graduates and is like the ideal uh, student. He did exactly what the program aims to do. He was taken, or he applied, and he left his community, his, um, that didn't have any access to healthcare that, for, um, where he had come from, it, healthcare was miles away, miles and miles, probably days. Uh, and his story is incredible. Um, yeah, so he's done everything. So he went to the school and then he returned back to his community in Honduras and built this off the grid, powered by solar panels, health clinic uh, for his community. You know, and that, I think that, that's beautiful. That's what you know we're supposed to do. Just another picture of him. And so a doctor who, through familiar that familial diagnostics, develops a strategy whose essential objective is to educate about health in order to raise the quality of life of his or her patients in the community. This is a new type of doctor, one who participates actively in social change, feeling committed to every social project of sustainable economic development, environmental protection, and social justice. So this is who I'm on the way to becoming. This is a really pretty picture. One night uh, I lived in this, the school is right in this town, uh, well right outside, it's called Baracoa, and this was one beautiful sunset um, that we had. Yeah, of a night. And then, too, if you have any other questions, there's a free, frequently asked questions page on. Um, yeah, thank you all. Thanks for listening. This program was made by a volunteer producer through MCM, a nonprofit organization.